Hello there, and we are doing advanced and super advanced uh, Stratomatic cards and dice football tutorials. Um, some requests have been coming down the pike for a while, so we are going to go over them. We've done a video regarding um, regarding the game board, defensive player squares. Uh, we've brushed on player ratings, and we're going to go into player ratings in depth. At the request of Busok, B-U-S-O-K space L, a subscriber of the channel, he really wanted to uh, get the hang of ratings, and I knew that we were going to do that kind of coinciding with the last video I did, which was the defensive players and the game board and how the defensive players moved before the snap, and I totally forgot we were kind of doing it backwards because that needed to be done. So you can see this. So we are going to go over player ratings and we got 76 Oakland 76 Pittsburgh but um let's uh follow along in the rule book we're going to be doing sections 21.0 and 22.0 as long as someone has split ratings I don't see any we're not going to worry about 22.0 it's super advanced there's none on these cards it's easy to figure out I suppose well let's go through uh offensive and defensive player ratings shall we and let's also get some defensive cards out and a couple of offensive cards out so we've got Oakland's defense we have Terry Bradshaw and Franco Harris for the Steelers and hopefully we can get this figured out with these dice, with these cards right here so offensive and defensive player ratings section 21.0 in the Stratomatic Football Rulebook Find the offensive and defensive players' numerical ratings, which are on these cards. Again, to uh, rehash what's on the cards. For defensive cards, it'll say which defensive alignment is their primary defensive alignment, 3-4 or 4-3. It'll have the pass rush rating of the players next to it. Some down here in the defensive player substitutes as well. Player names, player positions and defensive numeric ratings. The higher is better. Six, five, four, or zero for no rating. On the offensive team, you have, um, we'll go over the die rolls here, but against three, four, the offensive pass blocker, I believe this is, is indicated by the white die. Against 4-3, the offensive pass blocker is indicated by the white die roll, 1 through 6. Pass block ratings, offensive, line, uh, offensive players' names, offensive players' positions and substitutes down here, and then run block ratings. And the run block ratings are listed in these positions here. Pass block down this side. Um, pass block ratings are slightly different for offensive players because they have numeric ratings from 0, 2, 3, 5, and 7. Uh, again, the higher the better. Run block ratings is pretty much 6, 5, 4, and 0. Um, the same as the defensive ratings here. So let's go through the rule book. Um, do, 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 do. Find the offensive and defensive players' numerical ratings. 6, 5, 4, or 0, the higher the better, to the right of the names on both sides of their team's offensive and defensive rating card. They come into play in certain readings from the advanced defense cards. So these are the ratings that you will use. Example, on a running play, the reading offensive C7 plus offensive C plus 7 or plus 3 means the play will gain 7 or 3 yards depending on the quality of the center's run block rating. So as an example, we'll see here, um, we don't want to do the, uh, let's do blocking back right here. Put it in the center. We'll do this. Blocking back, um, let's say zero linebackers in the end run area. So there's a zero linebacker section. Blocking back, plus five or minus one. Now, plus five or minus one. The blocking back 
is generally a fullback. His block rating, Franco Harris, is 5. Now we're going to get through this a little bit. Um, okay, you just go off the player mentioned. So blocking back, fullback, his rating is 5. Whatever that die says. If the offensive player's rating is equal to or greater than the white die, you take the greater result, which is a five-yard gain. If it is less than his, if it is greater than his rating, which in Franco Harris's case at a five, it would have to be a six, you take the second number, which is minus one, a one-yard loss. So this is where blocking comes into play. Um, same with offensive linemen. But seeing how this is written, we're going to do offensive linemen in just a moment. But that's basically how it's done. Um, blocking back, Franco Harris. We'll say there's a linebacker out there. So blocking back, plus two or minus four. He rolls a one. His rating is greater than one. It's a two-yard gain. That is how you use the ratings for run blocking, basically, when a position player and two possible results come up on the defensive cards. Only on the defensive cards. The offensive cards are just like they are in regular. It's the same card. There's nothing different. We are using elementary. We are using the advanced side of the defensive cards. And there's a lot more possibility here. So let us continue. Doody doody do. Um, hmm. You use the same procedure. We're, uh... Third, second full paragraph, that sentence between the two examples, top of page 7, left column. Use the same procedure when results call for a defensive player rating. So let's say it's an end run, and we're looking at the defensive end. Minus 1 or plus 6. Depends on which side you're running to. If you're running to... The left side, the left end, would be John Matuzak, who is a four. I'm glad that happened. It was a five, which is greater than his rating of four, so it would be a minus one equal to or greater. If his rating is equal to or greater, so his rating is lower, sorry. So his rating is lower than the white die, which would result in the second number, plus six. He lost that engagement. However, if you were running to the right side, the right defensive end is Otis Sistrunk, and his rating is a six. And his rating is greater than the five, so you would read the minus one result for that play. That is how that works for defensive, end, uh, defensive players. Um, a little bit below that in the rule book, as you can see, the greater the ability ratings of the offensive player, the more yards gained. The greater the ability of the defensive player, the fewer yards gained. There's an easy way to remember. Use the first yardage marker whether an offensive or defensive player makes the play. Um, his rating is equal or better than the white die number. So if you're reading for a defensive player or an offensive player, regardless of what you're doing here, if his rating is equal to or better than the white die, use the first result. If his rating is less than the white die, use the second result. Offensive or defensive, that's how you do it. Let's see. 21.1, um, rule 21.1. If the rating of an offensive onside tackle, guard, or end is needed, use the rating of the player on the side of the play. On the side, the play has been directed. Example, if you call run around right end, and there's run around, there's end run, right end, this way, because they're facing us. They're coming to this side, and let's say the result is offensive onside tackle, plus eight or minus two, okay? And we're going to leave that at the 5. That means the tackle to the side the play is going, which for the offense is right, you're going to look at the right tackle, and the right tackle's run block is 5. 
So it is equal to or greater, you're going to use the first result plus 8, not the second result plus 2, where if this was a 6, this would be greater than his rating. That's when you would use the plus 2. That's what the onside, um, is that correct? Yes, onside tackle guard or end means the player designated that is on the same side of the play as the ball is being run when you're calling right side, when you're calling left side. Uh, let's say we're going a left side run, which would be this side of the field over here. And it's a five. And it calls for offensive, off, offensive onside guard. Plus seven or minus one. It's going to the left because they called left, right there, they called left. So the left guard, the onside guard, Sam Davis, has a rating of five, which is equal to or greater, so the result will be plus seven. If it were a six, if I can get a six, the six would be greater than Sam Davis's run block rating of five. So it would be a plus one result instead because he got beat at the line of scrimmage. Rule 21.2. The procedure is the same for pass plays where a result such as Defender X uh, or plus 31, Defender X or long gain, Defender X or plus 15, where that result happens. To determine the identity of the defending cover, defender covering the play, refer to the top right-hand corner of the intended receiver's card. So let's say that Bradshaw is throwing a short pass to Lynn Swan. He is being covered by the left cornerback. The left cornerback for the Oakland Raiders on the field is Skip Thomas, and his rating is 5. The white die is a 5, then it is equal to, his rating of 5 is equal to or greater than the white die. Da -da -da -da. So, that would go to defender, defender is the player you're looking for, and then the result is either X or long gain, X or 27 yard gain. Um, where was the other? X or 15 game. So you look at the defender. If he beats the die, you go with the first result, which is X. Let's say it was a 6. He gets beat on the play by Swanee, and you're rolling for a long game. That is how you do it in a pass situation. When it specifies a player and then gives you a choice of a better result or a worse result, or two different results. That is how you determine using the ratings of the players in order to find out how to do it. Uh, let's see, rule 21.3. Follow the same procedure on readings such as a linebacker in zone or defensive back in zone. You have Linebacker in zone on an end run, and let's say the linebacker in the zone is Ted Hendricks, and he is a five, and you roll, it's a four, Ted Hendricks has a five, which is equal to or greater, so you would take the first one, which is minus four. If it was a six, you would read plus four, a four-yard gain by Franco Harris. Instead, he got stuffed for a four-yard loss. Because Ted Hendricks was just that good. Um, refer to the offensive formation chart for further details regarding coverage responsibilities. And I'll go back here and I'll find that for you. And we'll just go over it together because I don't know that I've even looked at it yet. Offensive formation chart for coverage responsibilities. Okay, so if you are going with a specific kind of formation... The fullback is covered by the left outside linebacker, halfback by the right outside linebacker, flanker by the left corner, split end by the right corner. Remember, flanker's over here, the double teaming thing, left, out, left linebacker, flanker, right. So the flanker is on this side. 
the left corner does the flanker, right corner does the split end, strong safety covers the tight end in a pro set. Um, in a full house, uh, full house offense with the double tight end, uh, there's your full house. Three running backs, split end to tight end, uh, two tight end set up, three wide receivers and one running back, a uh, little running gun there, three wide receivers and two running backs, three running backs and three tight ends. Well, I wonder how you do that. I think that's a misprint. We might have to bring that up with Strat, so that way they know what's going on. I'm willing to bet that's kind of like a wing tee or a, or a full house backfield where it's three running backs and two tight ends, especially since they only have two tight ends there. So that's three running backs and two tight ends. Um, this is two tight ends, two wide receivers, and a running back, kind of like a lone setback. Uh, four wide receivers, and if you have a blocking back. Um, there's also adjustments down here, and we'll go over this at some point, but you can read this. Um, but basically that is how you use player ratings to have better matchups and more realistic results to uh, determine the outcome of a football game. And I really hope we covered most of it. And like again, I said, I don't play advanced. I've never played advanced, so we're learning this together as we go. And I hope I made it clear as mud. Again, this is uh, Stratomatic Delaware. Uh, this is Chris. Um, please uh, check out the other videos I've got in the tutorials. Next one up is going to be pass rushing. It's coming, Tony. It's coming right now. <laughs> but uh, like the video, please push the button so that way I know that you like what I'm doing and I can do more like it. Uh, share the video with your friends, social media. Send them a link on your cell phone and a text message. Yeah, get the word out there for me. That If you know somebody who will enjoy these videos, they get to see it. Um, you know, comment down below. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber already. And again, this is Chris with Stratomatic Delaware, guys. Keep on rolling.